Hello everybody. We're off to a different start today in my videos. There's a collection I had many years ago, 30 years ago maybe. Uh, my brother and I used to make tank models. And I hadn't built a tank in a long, long time. I recently met a fellow, a close a local friend when I moved up to North Georgia, a young guy named Cole, who is a big tank enthusiast. And he sort of reawoken me, uh, the love of building tank models. Now, I've always had a thing for German tanks. I don't know why I'm not a big fan of the Germans in World War II. I'm glad we beat them. Um, and I find it amazing when I really, the more I learn how lucky we are that we did beat them. I think the average person doesn't really understand one thing about World War II is we sort of had the time to get in there and get things done because we bombed the living crap out of them and their factories couldn't produce steel and other things and make the make the weapons of war that they wanted to make um long story and lots of history i'm not the historian guy i'm not here to be a historian and i'm not here to say a lot of things about the history of this particular tank model other than i've had it for 30 years boxed this is the dragon E100, I thought I was buying the mouse, the MAUS, because of the turret. But I later learned that this is actually what was nicknamed the Tiger Mouse, in that the hull, the, this lower part of the body, was developed for a different tank. And when the war was over, or towards the end of the war, when German factories were overrun, there is film and footage and photos of, I think, British or somebody finding this, the shell of this. I don't know that it had all the pieces. But they're climbing in it, walking around looking at it. And this was never produced. There, there's, this is what is known as a paper panzer. Um, it was never produced. They, they ran out of time. They ran out of manufacturing. Um, and hearkening to what I was saying, had we not blown them out of existence... Uh, many conjectures on this but had they had more time to produce more steel and could have done more we might have been up against monsters like this thing the E100 or the Tiger Mouse version or other versions of super tanks like the mouse and other things although I don't like the mouse very much it's an ugly tank but I like the turret and I'm kind of glad I've got the turret here it's a kind of an interesting design so what I did with my model is I learned about these super tanks that the Germans never produced. And it sort of became in the realm of imagination. I said, oh God, well, you know, who knows what it would have been like to go up against one of these in battle. They never really fought. It's all conjecture. So I bought this to have a mouse model in my collection of German tanks. I've got had at one time the Panzer I, II, III, all the way through Panthers, Tigers, T King Tigers. I like turreted tanks more than the hunting versions, but the hunting versions are cool also. So I'm trying to appeal to people that, that know a little more about uh, German tank development. Uh, you, you'll know more than I do. I mean, a lot of people out there are amazingly f full of information. But what I did was just I had fun with this model, and I said, well, what if there had been time in the war, what if the war had gone on in 1946, God forbid, or, or more, and they had had time to build such super tanks as this. This is like a 120, 128 millimeter cannon. Um, it's huge. It would have blown anything, especially the Sherman tanks that faced the initial wave of Germans. It would have blown them off the planet. This, by comparison, is a 75mm cannon that was co-mounted with this gun. I mean, the idea was insane. It's like, they're like train panzers. They're just gigantic. And, and to me, I'm just captivated by it. I'm captivated by the whole super panzer concept. The, the, what the Germans were designing. They were such amazing engineers. And a lot of this stuff went to battle untested and unproven and 
there's no there's no knowing what they might have been. You know, we we don't know. Um, by the way, for size, I want you to look at this. This is a Russian KV-1, which is a heavy tank, mid-war uh, piece of machinery here by the Russians. And look at what this thing looks like next to it. Now, a King Tiger would have been big also. This hull, this chassis, reminds me of Tigers and Panthers. And they are fairly comparable in scale, but this thing's still bigger. It's still bigger. This is a huge piece of machinery. In fact, this mouse turret is probably too big for this chassis. This is just the model was a concept tank. I mean, this their tanks were not as much steel as this turret. You know, this thing is huge. Now, I can see trains with turrets like this. I don't know, battleships. And by the way, they were planning big tanks like that. The Germans were. Wow, man. Anyway, when I did my model, I was like, to, real brief, I've got an aged, slightly battle-proven, old thing. There's no dings and dents yet. I haven't quite decided how to do that. I've heard a mix of these were impenetrable to when the British found them, they punched holes in them all day. So I, I, I don't know what the truth is, but I may put some ricochets and dings on this yet. But this is the first real aging, denting, painting, weathering on a tank model I've done in 30 years. I just haven't done it in a long, long time. I've watched a lot of videos on YouTube. Uh, I've watched a lot of people, you know, seen a lot of people, heard a lot of advice. And I use a basic German yellow scheme. I later have learned, of course, that they had a red oxide primer and on and on and on. I've learned so much since I started this kit. And what my idea was is that this turret was from a mouse that was number 13, like Unlucky 13, and it got destroyed. So to salvage it, they put it on an E100 chassis, gave it a fresh life, and sent it out in the battle. So this is my little, I call it Unlucky 13, or Lucky 13, really. It might have had a cool story. You know, there might have been tales like this you know, of German super tank crews going out and facing the encroaching allied whatnots. And it might have been really cool to to know. Um, it might have been interesting to see, read about, uh, whatever. So I let my imagination go crazy. This is a tank that doesn't exist. Anything I do is not technically wrong. I did try to bring out the details in the Dragon Maul. The Dragon Maul didn't have any accessories. It didn't have any, you know, it was not made. So they didn't, it doesn't have a lot of extra stuff. I did go out of my way to put a little extra track on the front bottom there. I just didn't want to put a lot of extra track anywhere. And I put dings and dents like this thing's been on the road. Wear, tear, dirt, scuffs. I added some handrails because top looked like you, I don't even know how you'd get on the top of this thing it, it'd be a huge tank to climb it's got like shot traps I would think they might have built a squared out thing here I don't even know this is you know this is all a little bit outside of my real knowledge but it sure is a cool looking tank bottom line I just enjoyed making it I think it looks wicked um, I'm really glad the American forces didn't fight things like this like a whole wall of these dang things coming at them. I mean, that would have been a true nightmare, you know, had they been able to, you know, rotate uh, gunfire fast enough. I have no idea with guns that big. Anyway, on and on and on it goes. I'll do a little view of the back side. I just dirtied it. I didn't muddy it. This kit has these awful tracks that have no pins. You just glue it. It's a, it was a it was a slog of a build. Uh, you see the back side there. The back side looks like a standard, like King Tiger or something. This, you know, exhaust system. I try, you know, added handles where you uh, these hatches and uh, trying to climb up. I don't know. It's it was fun. It was fun to weather it. I've never worked with the the metal parts before, where you come in and add those to the grills. I did hint at the red underneath that, like maybe they just left primer underneath the grill there. Um, I used a pencil to bring out the, the steel 
in the edges and stuff. Uh, I use techniques I've never done before. Drips, rust, you know, this is just something I've never done. So it was a blast. It was really fun, really cool. Um, again, I may build another one of these kind of tanks in the future. If you got comments, please share them. Lord knows it's all conjectural knowledge to me, and it would be, I guess, anyway. But this has been one heck of a fun model to build. It's really brought out something in me, and I hope to get obtain a 116 scale King Tiger. And that was a real tank that fought. And I want to, that's my dream one to have a model of that. Uh, just, I don't know why the German tanks haunt me, but they still do, and they always will. So I hope this has been interesting for you. Um, comment, uh, join, please subscribe if you haven't, and uh, like, please like, I hope you like, and we'll see you next time, and who knows with what, but for now, this is my ode to a paper panzer, the Tiger Mouse.